You've got 500 big ones to spend. But do you buy a brand new bike or a higher spec used bike? Well, before you do that, stop, because we've done exactly that so that we can directly compare their performance and give you some really useful information. Let's do it. So here's how this is gonna go down. I've got both of the bikes and I'm gonna ride them both on a hilly test route we have back to back at the same power output. Now, the key thing you need to know here is that through your support, we've bought both of these bikes, which means this isn't a sponsored video. It's not an advert, which means I can impartially tell you all about them and what's good and bad about them. So if you like this kind of content and you'd like to see more of it, then well, we'd really appreciate your support and you subscribing if you haven't already. This is the best bike that I could find for 450 pounds. It's a Boardman SLR 8.6. Now, I've done a video on this bike going into more detail about it, but the headline stats that you need to know right now are that it is an aluminium frame with a carbon fork. It's got Shimano Claris eight-speed gears, rim brakes. It weighs 10.4 kilos and it was 450 pounds as mentioned, but that was reduced down from 650 pounds. Bargain. And it's up against this beautiful Pinarello Uno X Carbon. Now you may recall that I actually bought this bike a while ago secondhand, and I even did a video where we rode it up the Stelvio Pass. Now it did used to have a ridiculous head tube thing going on. We've sorted that out. But the headline stats you need to know are that it is a full carbon monocoque frame and fork. It also has rim brakes. The group set is Shimano 10 speed with a mixture of different components. We've got Tiagra brakes, uh, Ultegra derailleurs, a Ultegra chain set and 105 shifters. It weighs 8.4 kilos and it cost me 500 of the King's English pounds on Facebook Marketplace. But when it was new back in 2010, it would have retailed around 2,000 pounds. First up, the Boardman. Let's do this. On both these runs, I'm aiming to average 200 watts. But whatever I do on the first one, I'll just make sure I repeat it on the second one. One of the biggest differences between the two bikes is actually the gearing. So on this one, I've got a much bigger range of gears and I've got 34 at the front, which is the same but I've got a 32 cassette on the back and already that's allowing me to just sit in the, well, the big ring a bit longer, but also just spin at a nicer cadence. Although I do have a bigger range of gears on this bike, the gaps between them are a bit bigger and that's because, well, this is only eight speed, the Claris, compared to 10 speed on that old 105 and well the, the shifts as you go up and down the cassette are noticeably not as smooth. Something for players of GCN tech bingo though, trickle down tech. These shifters on the new Claris are oh, mega. See like back in the day that 105 10 speed that's on the Pinarello, that was like the point at which you had the shifters with the integrated cables, not cables coming out the sides of the shifters. And now that's trickled down all the way to Claris. So you get these nice, neat shifters, no cables out the side, and the cables route through under the bar tape. It's really nice. The tyres on this bike are, you know, pretty entry level. They're quite pants. And uh, I just know that they're not very fast tires in terms of rolling resistance. And that's probably gonna slow me down more than you think. But, you know, on a bike of this level, that's to be expected. And it's the first thing that you'd upgrade. And one of the nice things about this Boardman is that it's got the capacity on paper, it says, to go up to 28 millimeters, which is what you want 
you know, but looking at it, I think you could get even bigger than that in there. Just coming up to the turnaround point. Whoa. And then we begin the big descent. Woo! Let's see what these brakes can do. Rapid. I'm going over 60k an hour and I've had to use the brakes a couple of times but you know these are entry level brakes but they're perfectly fine yeah they don't have the performance of high-end hydraulic discs but people forget I think how capable just basic rim brakes are when they're set up correctly on alloy rims you know carbon rims with rim brakes are pretty pants especially in the wet but you know, rim brakes on alloy rims, they're perfectly good. I'd have no hesitation about riding rim brakes on alloy rims in the mountain. We're coming into the finish now. I'll hit lap on the Wahoo. There we go. Now time for the Pinarello. Looking forward to this one. All right. Let's go. My first impressions riding them back to back, it's, it's amazing how much stiffer and just snappier this bike feels. Just accelerating off the line anytime we go up a little, a little rise. And I think that's, well, it's, clearly the, the weight difference between the two is going to be significant. It's quite a bit. And also, this is going to be a stiffer bike being made from carbon fiber. As for the difference that that makes in the overall times, well, we'll have to wait and see. But I think it's going to be quite surprising for you. Another big difference is comfort. This is noticeably less comfortable. And over a long ride, that could be significant. And the reason as to why, I'm pretty sure it's down to the tires. Now, one of the big differences between bikes of this age and new bikes is that tire clearance has just continued to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that means you can fit bigger tires, which are more comfortable, and also faster rolling. Now, here, I couldn't fit bigger tires if I wanted because, you know, bikes of this era, you're kind of maxing out at 25 mil. And that's just because the brakes don't accommodate it and the frame doesn't accommodate it. You can see on here, like, how close these 25s are to the edge of the frame. You know, if where you live has a lot of smooth roads, it's, it's probably not much of an issue, but it's just something that's worth bearing in mind when you're making a decision. We're on a 7% gradient here, and I'm in my, my easiest gear, the 3428. And, and as soon as it goes up, I mean, it's gone up to 10% and I'm, I'm really churning and, it, and that highlights one of the big evolutions of bikes in the last 10, 15 years is gears have also got way easier. You know, it's common now for the pros to have a 34 tooth cassette on the back. I've only got a 28. And you know, that is something that's, well, hugely advantageous. It means that you don't build up as much lactate. You're not as anaerobic. You're not churning on the climbs, being able to spin, it's just the way to go, spin to win. But you can modify these bikes. You can use more modern components on them to give you that better gear range. It's just when you buy them with the original sort of components like this, yeah, you're probably not gonna have that gear range. I am loving riding this bike though. It, it is really nice and it reminds me of my first like carbon road bike, which had 105 on it. And you know, this road's mega, the weather's good today, that view's wicked. And it just serves to remind you that it doesn't matter what bike you're on, the view is still the same. Right, 
We're just coming up to the top section now where there's the turnaround, and then I'll go down the hill, see how fast I can get this baby to go. We're just coming up to the fast section now. And in terms of aerodynamics, I'd expect both these bikes to be pretty comparable. They both have externally routed cables. They both have entry level shallow wheels and frames that aren't especially aerodynamic. You know, the frames don't have you know, the aero features that you get on much more expensive bikes. Just coming into the, the finish of our test run around this corner and I'm there and I'll hit lap on the Wahoo. Done. Before we go on to the results, I do want to caveat something, which is I know that this isn't the most accurate way to test. There are lots of variables here that I can't control for, but this test is still valid because it is sufficient to highlight the differences between the two bikes. I got the results. So, the new bike did the route in 30 minutes, 52 seconds, 198 watt average. The used bike did it in 30 minutes, five seconds, 47 seconds faster, and it did it of 199 watts. So, you know, one watt in it, it's more or less. Uh, the same. Now that's that's quite a lot to me. I think that's quite impressive. And I think we can attribute that mainly down to the weight because when I delve a bit more into the results, I can see that on the two and a half kilometer hill climb section, uh, this was 25 seconds quicker on that bit. So most of the time gain there, that's largely gonna be down to the weight because as mentioned, the used bike is you know, a few kilos lighter than that one. But I think also the tires are gonna play a part too, as mentioned, the, the, the Pirelli's on here, lower rolling resistance than the tires that come on that, but that is the first thing you'd upgrade is your tires, and you could do that and improve it in that way. On the downhill section, there wasn't much between the two. This was two seconds quicker on the two and a half kilometer descent, but you know, I'm gonna put that within sort of experimental error. That's quite close, and it's to be expected. Aerodynamically, there's, there's not really much between them. Overall, the used bike is, I think, significantly faster, and there are a lot of great used bargains out there. But to summarize where you're likely to be limited with a used bike, especially if it's older and sort of like this, 2010 or before that, is tire clearance and the gearing range that's on the bike. But that's not all, because while many of you will like the idea of buying a great used bargain, such as this, and getting more bang for your buck, a lot of people will be put off by the potential fear of buying a complete lemon. A bike that has been crashed or damaged and will potentially need expensive repairs. Well, fear not, because I've already made an extensive video guide telling you everything that you need to know when buying a used bike and everything to look out for so that you don't end up buying a rubbish one. And we'll link that video at the end of this one. I'm gonna go now, love you. Bye!